Can you hear us now? Let but us I know. Can, I can do it again now they're mm -hmm. hearing us. Now they're hearing us. Okay, you gonna now do it again? I'll do it again if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's do this again since you guys <laughs> couldn't hear me. <laughs> oh, but the yes is coming in now. Okay, great. You can hear me now. So I want you to listen up. We're going to say this together. I'm going to say it and you're going to repeat it after me. So I'll leave a little space behind when I say it to give you a chance to say that, okay, to repeat it. All right, it's going to start like this. It's, there's an old concept that we've had that we are a spirit inside of a body, but this is to change that concept. All right, I want you to repeat this after me. I am spirit and the body is outside of me. Mm -hmm. Every thought is a choice between a grievance or a miracle. I want you to think about that. Every thought is a choice between a grievance or a miracle. I relinquish regrets. I relinquish grievances. I relinquish resentments. And accept the miracle. I'll say that one again. Mm -hmm. I relinquish the regrets. Mm -hmm. I relinquish the grievances. And I relinquish the resentments and accept the miracle. The answer to my problem is the miracle concealed by the grievance. The answer to my problem is the miracle concealed by the grievance. So if I let go of the grievance, the miracle automatically appears. That's what it's saying. Mm. If I let go of the regrets, if I let go of the resentments, the miracle automatically appears because it's hidden by those resentments and those regrets and those grievances. So we relinquish that today, don't we? Mm -hmm. We let that go so that we can see the miracle that's already present with us and already here, already happening, already manifesting, and everything that we need is already happening. Okay. That's real, huh? Right? It's real. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a whole lot. Um, I want to talk to. I want to talk to everybody about everything. <laughs> I want to say one word. And like I heard a guy say this morning on a near death experience, he said, the voiceless voice or the voice spoke to me that is no language. And it spoke to him and told him that he had always loved him and his sister on the other side, as well as loving them from beginning to end. He loves, God loves everybody the same way. Yes. And I, I, I translated into the Sawyer's translation, God is love in everybody. Mm. I had it mentioned mm. to me when I mentioned somebody about the essence of God is in our president. The essence of God is so intent. It is the supreme and ultimate reality. Mm. It is the supreme and ultimate reality of all that God is in everything in every way. Now you stop right there. We can stop there and just keep reading that and meditating on it over and over again. And it's like consciousness will yield itself mm. unto the words that we just spoken that are so wordless, yet it is spoken with such a loud stillness that it makes noise in a supernatural way that is so absolutely received and registered in the deeds of righteousness with effortless energy. Mm. 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 Essence of this type that I'm speaking of is the ultimate nature of all things. 
from the desert to canyons and beyond human understanding. Jesus' clothes speak louder than any sound that could be made. I got a train horn on a three, four, a two or three trumpet sound train horn on my Jeep. Yes, he does. <laughs> and every time I blow it, somebody stick their hand out the window and give me the finger. Every ego gets mad. I stir up the <laughs> Including monkey. Including mine. Yes. <laughs> I don't blow it when the police around because they, they, don't, they don't like you to play with them, but I don't play with it. I it's just, your boy toy. Yeah, it's my toy, but I blew it. One guy gave me a word from a track and trailer waving at me. He said, after I saw him at the, at the stop, he said, it's loud and horn on his truck. <laughs> now, the sounds of God, if you could go through the Bible and any other book and listen to the sounds that are being made from the author and the finish of any publication, God's voice is so quiet and still that you could hear his voice over mm. all the rest of them. Mm. This is what I... I, I yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's like when you turn everything off in your house mm. Mm. And, mm. or the power mm. goes out, it is an absolute mm. Mm. noisy silence. It's a noisy silence. It's a silence that you can hear. In, in my investigation into the channel in which the voice of God operates through, for years I've meditated on it, meditation the imagery i had the opportunity of learning how to go into the words on the page panoramic experience on a page mm -hmm. and hear god i could hear the, the the whoever the spokesman was on this page i could feel his voice on the paper mm -hmm. and i could return to that place where it was once spoken in its true essence. If you're going to read this book or any other book, you must empathically go into the author of it and get into the soul of it yes. so you can fully see exactly what was going on, for instance, in the Garden of Gethsemane, what was going on with Jesus on the cross, what was going on with the narrators and the, the ones that uh, wrote the, 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 the script when they found the parchments in the, uh, the Dead Sea Scroll even though you don't read Greek and Hebrew, you could go into the spirit <coughs> of the Hebrewic that wrote this. Yes, yes. And yes, and then catch can. on to the spirit of the mode that he was in yeah. during the time he was yeah. writing it. And yes, and that's very doable. I remember years ago when I was managing the physical therapy clinic, uh, there was mm -hmm. a young lady who was doing all of our transcriptions, all of our transcribing for medical records. And that was back in the day when we used typewriters and then we, we moved up to uh, the word processor. So anyway, I was, I've was i always been able to type, but not as fast as she could. She was she was great. That girl could type out a letter in, in no time. But anyway, I remember her. I, um, one day she was absent and I had to do the transcribing mm -hmm. and do the letter and I sat down to the typewriter and I or the uh, processor and I thought man <clears throat> it's going to take me forever to do this this uh, these records and uh, in fact I have sometimes I have a dream about uh, having to do those records again and, try, and type them all out but as she was gone because she was gone I had to do them and when I sat down I took on her Persona. Persona. Mm -hmm. I, I took on how she how she postured herself, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I actually in my inward self became her, and mm -hmm. I typed that letter out, and boom, no mistakes. That thing went great, but I had to take it on. Mm -hmm. Is that what it means when it says put on Christ? Put on, that's right. Now, you can put this on by attitude. Mm -hmm. we, call it, we call it a chewed. Mm -hmm. A long time ago, they used to call a television a tube, a tube. They didn't yeah, call that's it right, television. because it had tubes A in tube, it. that's all it was, yes. a tube. A little bitty screen, you sit there and look uh -huh. at it. Everybody looking at this little uh -huh. bitty screen. <laughs> it is a tube. Now, mm -hmm. in meditation, imagery, and delivery, I picked this up from a, a praying in tongue master named Dave Robeson in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's, he has the book, The, uh, the Walk in the Spirit, The Walk of Power. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a chance to meet him at late night at 12, at late night brunch and I, I used to talk to him on the telephone he spent hours praying in tongues but anyway uh, he talked about meditation 
to the point as a teacher, the office of a teacher, you should be able to teach as though uh, you are actually the characters and the event and the mode of the Mm-hmm. of what you're teaching. You're entering into it, yeah. like you said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and when I was in school, I used to like to hear the teacher, first, second grade, they used to uh, tell the story of Jack Tales, Jack yeah. and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Yeah. And when I got out of school, I got older, I, upstairs, I collected all the the stories of Jack and the Beanstalk. And um, I would rather hear her teach, and it, it just looked like you could just get into the story. And you were... Uh, well, actors call it getting into character. Yeah, yeah. Because what they do is they they actually become that character. Now we've had people come to our, our ministry in our church that could uh, that was a uh, very theatrical, and they could actually mm-hmm. act like they were receiving things from God, mm-hmm. and of course in the in the church where they call it by faith, but uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you there's a difference between faith, and facts, and reality, and, uh, presumption. and presumptions, mm-hmm. and presumption. But uh, once you understand the mystical side, see, see, if you're going to walk the walk and talk the talk, you'll walk it on a non bipartisan <laughs> You're looking away from everything. I, I'm, I'm looking because I'm, 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 I'm seeing... Who are you I'm seeing, talking to? You're talking I'm talking to Oliver, Oliver and, and I, that word, he, that's the second time that word has come up since he been... A non-bipartisan. Yeah, he, he gave me the definition of bipartisan. Mm-hmm. Can, can well, you, no partiality. Yeah, that's what he mm-hmm. said. No partiality. And I don't know the definition of these terms. They just come up on a spontaneous, intuitive basis. <laughs> when I found out that I was co-author, co-publisher, and finisher, the beginning, co-beginning, co mm-hmm. with no end, mm-hmm. all wealth, all success and prosperity, yes, yes. it became very easy for me to distinguish between left and right, right and wrong, uh, success and failure. I, failure can stay around me Failure can try to get in me. Fail, I'm going to just say it like that. Failure can be a part of me, but mm-hmm. it cannot interfere with who I am as no failure, yes. success. Yes, I think Jesus, well, I know Jesus came I, not so much to be worshipped. Jesus didn't come to be worshipped, but he did, he did come to demonstrate to us what it's like to have divinity expressed. Uh, he expressed the divinity that's in everyone that's one of us that's why he said the kingdom of god is within you and he wasn't talking to just christians when he said that so he he came to demonstrate that and that's what needs to be brought to the forefront in us that there is divinity in you that has to emerge Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh all right here we go in my investigation into the the light that we are I want you to hear this today. Jesus in the book said, we are the light of the world. He said, let your light shine. I just discovered that the light that we are cannot be blocked out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, hold on now. Hold on to me now. Just stay with me. Mm -hmm. When I found out the, the mask that this dimension tries to use to uh, to make our minds pretend like the light is not shining through. Mm -hmm. When I found out that it was something like a shell or an encasement of a lie, a deception, an untruth, Mm -hmm. you know, like I often tell you guys, you can go into a house where somebody just baked fish or fried chicken. My wife fixed that good old bread, you know, that homemade yeast <laughs> rising bread. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What you cooking? It smells like old hometown, old, old country cooking. <laughs> oh, I did it yesterday. The odor and the fragrance. Watch this. Here it comes. The odor and the fragrance. Mm-hmm has saturated itself into the fabric of the house. Yes, yes. When a house does not have the flavor, the presence of 
light beings living in it, such as us, oh, listen, that house will go down. The energy is there because of us. And there won't be peace in it. There won't be peace. You can tell. It, it, it's something about the wood. It's something about the, the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a man. Well, he, and for some reason, people that come to our house and stay for any length of time, if they stay long enough, they'll say, I just feel like I just want to go to sleep and take a nap. Oh, yeah. That's Paul Ford is on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, let, let me tell you something. I just ate a little small piece of chicken and it's assimilating itself down in me. Now, it may work a little trouble. That chicken becoming human. Yeah, it, it, sometimes that chicken in there act like it, it got feathers still on it. <laughs> and that thing just <laughs> bubbling up in there and before you know it, you, something be talking to you. And I sitting there watching a Star Wars movie one day and then planes that fly over and that surround sound. It, it, I thought one came over, but it was my stomach boiling in there. <laughs> uh, the, the, I want you to hear a, a true, if you're going to say prophetic and prophet and all that kind of stuff and positionalities, mm -hmm. you are what soaks in you. What soaks in you should come back out through you with a fragrance. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. smell of an apostle, the smell so, of a, a pastor, the smell of an evangelist, the smell of a teacher, it, they carry their own color, smell, taste. Seeing, knowing, and hearing. So if I saturate myself in those things that bring joy, those things that bring peace, those things that bring a loving affection toward others, then that is the presence that I exude? What, what if I tell you that you've never been anything but God's saturation? Exactly, exactly. I, I'm trying, I want to remove the process. You want to remove the, I've got to. Got to, and, mm -hmm. and what if... And, and all that I want to remove the process and the uh, the, the technique one two three four this presence that we are now I, I'm gonna go back into a heavy stuff now I, I think you think it's heavy maybe maybe mm -hmm. not you, you know you, you were talking about bipartisan mm -hmm. uh, and I was looking at my note and it just says that the gospel of Jesus was not social or political oh Social or political? It's not social or political. So this gospel that we we are talking about, we're teaching, has nothing to do with their police position in in politics. Has nothing to do with what's happening socially in the world, does it? Something in our government has told the church that if the church would honor and give off the the deal that they would present a certain positionality in Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C. To meet an agenda. To meet an agenda by saying that this positionality over the country that wanted them to say that he was a Christian and that he was saved just for political reasons, that this person, this being, would give the church what they want, and a deal has been made. Underneath all of that, above all of that, let's move on. Yes. Yes. This presence, because this that we're talking about is not is bipartisan. Yeah, yes, it does not have favorites. It does not have a right side and left side. Exactly. When you learn, I'm, I keep saying learn. It's not a learnt thing. It is a seeing, knowing. That is a knowing that comes from the fragrance of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been in in the car with people that smoked, and they whole car smell like smoke. Yeah. And when you get out of the car, you Your smell like and yeah, everything. you smell like them. And you don't even smoke, and you come in. They come around you, and you be wondering, what in the world? They don't got smoke all in their clothes. And that's not to come against people who are smoking. I am not against no, smoking. If you if you that. believe that God put a chimney on your head, keep smoking if you want to. But I can tell you from my personal experience, I've worked around the stuff for seventeen years. I know what they put in it, and I know what it would do to you based on my brother and my mother who crossed over, physically died from. COPD from smoking for years. So and, you're an advocate for that. I'm yeah, sure. I, I'm not against. I'm not. I'm not trying to take sides with whether you you can smoke. You can go back, go out there and find you an exhaust pipe on the back of a '44 or '49 Chevrolet and suck. suck I can and, pull you back in. Come, come on, on come no, on don't pull in. me back in. Come on, back I'm, in. I'm on the back end of the tailpipe <laughs> and the mufflers. You're on your soapbox now. Dual, dual, yeah. dual exhaust if you want. To. I got four of them on the back of my Jeep. <laughs> suck every last one of them. 
You Listen, are I've still gotta, gotta, the light I've, of God. I've got to read some of these comments. Can you, okay, can you hold ahead. it for a moment? Yeah, okay, so Marsha I'm... says, there is a knowing that comes from the fragrance of God. Yes. And Michelle says, sometimes I feel like I'm being arrogant when I believe that I am divine. But I realize that I am, I am God and he is me. I have to do this work do his work my mind and my body are not the light because the body is outside of me but my deepest self is god's energy okay can i read this you She's got some got more really really long oh well, so you we, got long we'll one. read that one all together in, in a little bit michelle but yes you in the the truth is michelle your body is outside of you it's with it's within you and it's outside of you and it is still god's concentrated localized I should say frozen consciousness. Mm. So it is not something that's bad. It's not your body is not bad. It's not something to discard. Okay, and that part you said it, but I realize that I am God. Let's let's stay with that part right there because I'm gonna read something to you here and just hold on to that. Okay. Okay. Many I say mystics recognize that the subjugation of the ego is a necessary step toward enlightenment. Remember, the goal of a mystic is direct communion with God. Yes. As yes. you attune daily with your divine aspect or master within, your goal is eventually to align your will with the will of God to do this. To do, and he said to do this fully, fully the ego must be surrendered. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. I want that part of you that you that's saying, I realize that I am God. I'm going to give you a, a parable. Get into bed tonight and say that and meditate on I am God. Whatever insight come to you about that, stay under the cover. Don't come out. Now, if you come out and you feel like you're ready to tell everybody that you are him and he's you, go back up under the cover mm -hmm. and ask him to show you how to say that without the ego mm -hmm, without arrogance without arrogance or without feeling without a feeling but just a knowing a superiority yes. the mind is and my body you say are not the light let, let me explain something to you about the body and the mind when peter was out on the water walking with jesus jesus he asked jesus when he saw him out there if you go in the book we use these as examples peter as long as he looked at jesus he could walk the water mm -hmm. The water, the, the water becomes solid. Mm -hmm. When he took his eyes off of him and looked at the ego, or that voice that made him feel that he has uh, accomplished something, made him feel like he was somebody, mm -hmm. and then all oh, in that case, no man can do this. This is not real. This is yeah. a dream. Yeah. Yeah. Then when Peter began to look away from reality of facts, he began to sink. Mm -hmm. His only identity was in Jesus, who had the garrisoned his ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The clue to Jesus walking mm -hmm. through doors is egoless. Yes. The clue to yes. him walking on the water is egoless. Yes. The clue to him coming out of the wilderness in fullness of power and in the fullness of identity awareness is egoless. Yes. Yes. He said the prince of this world come and have and he hath no egoless mm -hmm. in me. Yes. Even though it's there I know some people that are interested in dealing with deliverance and divinations and all kinds of demon powers. That's a lower vibrational frequency that I believe that a lot of us need to be trained and mentored in yes. long enough to come out of it and understand how the balance work. Yes. Yes, these demonic forces are real, but let me tell you where they come from. They come from the presence of us mm -hmm. in our eternal self who misdirect energies and yes. powers yes. and create them as an offset or distraction or a speed bump. Mm -hmm. And some people get stuck into that arena mm -hmm. yes. and swear that everything that goes wrong, everything that's dark is the devil and demons and familiar spirits. Now and, listen to this. There's only one real familiar spirit. That isn't that the spirit of God, your eternal self. Because he's familiar with you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. 
Now, the, and go remember, ahead. I go remember ahead. Uh, we always talk about spiritual warfare, that, and those who uh, are in that arena that you're talking about, mm -hmm. they're really fo their focus is always on spiritual warfare, taking mm -hmm. control over what's happening and trying to change it and all of this. And so, when Jesus made a comment, he said, "If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight." Mm -hmm. So that tells me this: if I'm in the kingdom that Jesus is talking about, I'm not in the kingdom of the world. I'm not supposed to be fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fighting is not of the kingdom of God. If I am wrong, if I am right, it has no warrant. It has no suspicion. It has no no root in my identity if I have gone into this without the attachments of these umbilical cords to want to be famous, popular, or to be noted. Mm -hmm. I am not mm -hmm. interested in this program mm -hmm. for the for the uh, the value of you guys sending word out. I have never heard a man like this or a woman like this. They too, they are, they are so. Now don't get us wrong. We love the compliments. We love the compliments, and we enjoyed having you guys validate us. We want you to keep doing that. But we're talking about we're not expecting for this to blow up into something mm -hmm. uh, spectacular. Right, and I'm not, and we're not false humilitizing this thing either. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, mm -hmm. and I thank you for the compliments. I thank you for that. For, for the love you see. For the see. love. Yes. Hey, look, I, I, one of the first things I like to tell people, and I have to be careful with it. Um, a long time ago, my uncle used to tell me, said, you ought to wink at some of them girls out there. I said, wink? <laughs> I said, yeah, wink like that. I said, what does that mean? So I started winking. And uh, they, I started picking up, they were thinking I was making passes at <laughs> them. So I watched the wink. Yeah. I am... I, I was also told that if you told a lady that they were pretty, that meant that you wanted them. And that was incorrect. And that was incorrect. So I had to find out by experience that you can tell a lady that they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can tell anybody how great they are. Because it's just a statement of fact. But you got to learn what is oozing out through you. I know some ladies. The Lord told me one time. This is what the Spirit said. He said, uh, there are some ladies that you haven't run across that could come into your church and ooze out their seduction. I yeah. had it to happen. Yeah. I've had them come, look like they flew in they're from TWA. <laughs> come in and flew in I from, know, from so, down inside like, the earth. Just like, come right up out of the ground. <laughs> like they have no, no imperfections Ooh, And all. sit on the front row <laughs> and spread their leg like duck spreading his wings on a lake. Oh my. I'm telling you. And... Um, We've had had the, uh, the ushers to go and put napkins over them to hide them, and they get up mad and walk out. I mean, chitlins and dumplings and all that stuff right there. Come on back. I'm Come coming back. back. I'm coming back. back. But I, I and, and this lady here, this lady right here, she taught me how. This lady is my school of women. I taught him how to look without lusting. No, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, don't believe that. It's still, that old monkey up there still do that. I don't tell him you can't But you know look. what I do now when I see one pretty? I say, baby, look at that. Ain't that something? She say, what? I say, right there. She said, I look two times already. <laughs> then, then sometimes she'll tell me, she'll catch it before I do. She'll say, honey, don't look. That's right. Don't and my, look. my head be turning like, You're too young for this. Don't look at it. Yeah. That's why I got two sets of glasses. <laughs> the one that shades where I look, can't nobody see me. Now, do you remember what you were talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> he said that there are women that can come in your church <laughs> and distract you. Mm -hmm. on an assignment. Mm -hmm. I've had prophets to come in my church and pull them out. Because they and were prophesy so beautiful. To them. I had women come in and be on, on in the audience and they 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 look like a Harry Tubman from way back there for Columbus said. Yet they had seduction. They had some kind of duction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. They were they were ducking it. They were ducking, ducking, okay, ducking. Come back. But and I, and uh, I learned from her. Now, when I met her, she had duction all over her, but she didn't think she had it. So I didn't tell her that she had it, but she had it. Because, let me tell you something, else. essence, it, listen to this. You don't have to do anything but find out 
how deep, how deep, how deep, 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 how deep the vein, the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me back up and get out of church. The blood of your eternal essence yes, sir. at the core center of the tree that is oozing out of you. Yes. And let me tell you something. And without our knowing it. That's the yes. that's, that's the thing. It's doing it without our knowing it. Who that was the Socrates said, know yourself. And I and the, the problem has been with the ego is it wants to see how great we are. Yeah. And, and it you uses it. And you won't see how great you are. You will not see how great you mm -hmm, are because mm -hmm. when the ego sees how great it is, it inflates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. when you're egoless, you don't even know how great you are. And we're here to tell you how great you are. And you don't have to feel it. You don't have to see it. On the other hand, the ego has no interest in attaining your full spiritual potential. It does not want you to attain your full spiritual potential because it wants to be the one in the forefront yes. advertising. Yes. We've had over the years, that 50 some years, we've had people come to us and say, but sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with you and help you open doors. And get things going. Then, as soon as they get there, well, and our ego jumped on it because that's what we wanted at that's the right. time. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it had to die. But mm -hmm. here's what I had to do: I had to learn mm -hmm. something. Some part of me had to find out how to recognize the ego and how to come. And and one, some part of you has to come to an end. And, and there was a, a point in our ministry where we were trying hard to grow the ministry, trying hard to win people, trying hard to keep people on the right track, trying hard. I mean, the whole thing was just trying hard. And and so at some point, we just came to an end. It just came to an abrupt stop, like, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. She said on here, Michelle said, uh, she's going to go under the cover and then ask God to show her how to say I am God without the ego. Okay, the first thing, the first, the first deliverance of being free, I don't like that word, being free from the ego is the recognition. When you just said, I'm going to ask God uh, to show, me, show how. me how to say that without the ego, you just recognized it. You're and free right there at that point. The light was shown to you. And, Michelle, that the saying I want God to show me how is the mind. The mind wants to know how because mm -hmm. the mind is constantly trying to become what you already are. Mm -hmm. And so it's looking for any kind of process, any kind of clue, mm -hmm. any kind of tool, anything that it can do to look like God, but it will never. So that part that said, I want God to show me let that go. Relinquish that because you are already that that's being sought. You are already the one that's looking is In the one that's going to be found. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. You said, thank you, Pastor. Can you run that up a little bit so I can finish? Mm -hmm. that's it. I, I want to be a tool for the Holy Spirit. Let me share something with you. You have always been You've a tool. You've always been now, a tool. Let me explain this. Let me break it down to you. And this is not just for Michelle. No, this, this for is all for of you. all of you. Okay, here we go. When I go to the word infinite, eternal, mm -hmm. everywhere present identity self. For, as you, as we, my wife was talking then, I sensed the presence of the detachment from the ego in your life and many others that's listening to us this morning. Mm -hmm. God has always been to you from the birth and in the womb all the way out through to this point. Yes, Every yes, part yes. of your life mm -hmm. and everybody else's life, when you go to omnipresence, mm -hmm. you know, some of y'all want God to be in your church this morning because you feel him and not in other churches where you can't see him until you see them and they tell you he was there too. Some of y'all wants to be, what is that, bipartisan again? There we go again with that word. We want God to be isolated and separated, but we are here to to remove the middleman. And the truth <coughs> is, when, whenever the mind wants to know how, that means there is something there. There is an inner judge mm -hmm. that's that's speaking inside of you that's saying you're not enough. You're not good enough. 
You're not there yet. That is the inner judge saying that. God is not saying that to you. God is not uh, measuring you and saying you're not enough. You're not good enough. You haven't gotten there yet. That is not God. So that's the inner judge that's saying that. That is another aspect of the ego that's con that doesn't like the way it looks. It doesn't like the way your, your life looks, your body looks, and it causes you to have more and more suffering. So if you can just recognize that that's the inner judge, and that is not, even though it sounds really mm -hmm. notable and noble, I want to know how that is not the voice of your pure self. That is the inner judge because it's seeing, it's judging that you are not enough. Now listen to this. The ego will create all sorts of rationalizations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All sorts of rationalizations to keep itself in power and prevent, and prevent you or prevent your awareness or try to prevent your all-seeing, knowing self. Exactly, exactly. From coming to the forefront of your yes. awareness. Yes. But let me let me comfort you there. Let me comfort all of you. If you go to the highest peak, mm. to the highest mountain, mm -hmm. and look for him, you might miss him. If you go to the depths of the ocean, mm -hmm. where nobody's ever been, you might miss him. If you go to the the widest desert, the driest places in the earth, and look for him, you might miss him. You come back home and you sit down in your house with no furniture, and you say, "I'm gonna get rid of everything so God can come in." You might miss him. <laughs> and you're looking for God in all the wrong places, yeah. but there's one place you'll never miss him. God has always been to you from day one, if there'd ever been a one. God has always been all of us. Mm -hmm. What we're doing on these programs is showing you how to do what is called yeah. see through and look past. It's time for you to recognize the noise of the ego, look at it, identify it, yes. walk with it, walk from it, mm -hmm. but you need to be fully inducted into the military of your strategic warfare, no war identity that actually brings your awareness around to a place where there is no war, there is no fight, and there is no enemy except for you yourself using your infinite power to create, to create loops, to create these beings so you can have something to play with. Yes, yes, you don't sir. need to play with them. You need to look at them and laugh at them. Yes. I've heard God inside of me laugh at darkness. I've heard darkness even look at God and submit itself to the laughter of God and darkness change into God's laughter and <laughs> not be a fake. Because God is not afraid or threatened by anything that appears not as he is. But it is still God in a shadow self. I like what Pearl said. She says, that's the personal side that's living through the illusion still. What I am saying is you can't lose for the kind of stuff you use. And you know, in, in, in our earth in this very earth right now, there are places in this earth that have never been discovered. That's right. There are some areas of this earth that have never had the eyes of a man even look on it. And there are places in the ocean where there's never been anybody to see what's there. There are undiscovered depths within you. They're the same undiscovered depths within you and once you start going into those places and it'll be dark it will be dark as you do inner work it will be dark you'll see things that you've never seen before some you will not like but th remember that is the inner judge that doesn't like what it sees it sees but it has an opinion about what it sees when you look at, when you're an observer and a witness of who you are of what's going on in your life the thoughts and the feelings and all of that you are when you're the true observer you don't have an opinion about what you see but when there's an opinion that is the inner judge that's another aspect of the ego it is no longer i that live but christ that live 
with all the flaws and the seemingly mistakes, the long coming, the short comings, the wide comings, and the overweight comings, and the underweight comings. Look, look, when my wife was in the hospital this week and she was dealing with the kidney stones, mm -hmm. I had a chance mm -hmm. to stand outside and look at her in the window. And everybody talking about the COVID-19. And they looked at us and we wanted to know, did we have it and all that stuff. All these things are going through the mind. When the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. your divine human self, the Christ divine human self, Christ is everybody's eternal self. Yes, sir. I want yes, you to hear sir. this. Yes, you're sir. not a Christ because you're a Christian. You are Christ because you are eternal life. I got to deal with what Michelle is saying because I want my sweetheart to come out of the thinking that she's in right now, out of the suffering that she's in. She says, I've been dominated by the inner judge my whole life. Mm -hmm. I want to be free. Mm -hmm. I want to be egoless. egoless. Mm -hmm. I've never felt worthy. First thing I want to say to you, Michelle, is this, sweetheart. The thoughts that you had, the inner judge, the thoughts that it's saying about you. Mm -hmm. It's noisy. It's not kind, first of all. It doesn't like you, so mm -hmm. it cannot be God. First of all, we have to set that and fix that in our understanding that this is not God talking mm -hmm. to me, saying that I am not enough or that I'm whatever it's saying to you. So if it's not true of you, what it's saying, if that inner judge is not saying the truth of you, do you have to believe it? That's mm -hmm. where you should start. Do you have to believe what it's saying uh, what about you? What the noise you? is. Yeah. Do you have to believe what it's saying about you? Only when you <laughs> believe what it's saying about you will it cause you to feel unworthy. So this is where I want you to start. Ask the thing, is this true? Is it absolutely true about me? And if you can't say it's absolutely true, then you do not have to believe it. You know that it is something talking against you. Do not go along with it. I think I'm going to go see my gynecologist <laughs> and ask my gynecologist, will <laughs> she or he do a little surgery on me and make me look like my wife? <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not coming against uh, them. Lesbianism, homosexual, all that. I'm just making an example. If you're a male, you're a male. If you're a lady, you're a lady. What you do with your business, what you do with your body, is your business. I don't mess with people with that, like I used to when I was young and ignorant. Well, thank God the judge kind of silenced thank you. itself no. in that area. Some of my best friends, and I'll be honest with you, some of my best friends are some of those people who uh, was just previously mentioned in my conversation. They're my best friends. I don't mess with them. I've had communities to come and rent space for me in my church, and I gave them a space, and I, I, I understand the love of God unconditional. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, okay. you may not like me for that. You may want me to take oh, sides, but they I ain't. Do. I ain't they I'm, do. I'm not talking to you guys who understand. I'm talking to one who wants to fight. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't now, think anybody on here is wanting to fight you. No. But now, there is a part of you that is potentially ready to hear, look, and listen without participating. We call it the observer of yes. what is. The true witness. The watcher. Mm -hmm. An example is, when you have dreams, you wake up the next morning and you can remember the dream, some do, some don't, and uh, you sit down and you journal the dream. If you notice that in the dream there's, a, there's, the, there's a, a part of you that's looking at yourself dreaming, then there's a part that's in the dream, mm -hmm. then there's a part, if you, if you go mm -hmm. back into it, would be the observer of the dream. Mm -hmm. We're so multidimensional. Multidimensional. That's three aspects of yourself already. And you can go all the way over into the fourth manifestation of yourself as looking over the whole thing from a different perspective. You often hear people talk about that in near-death experiences in the emergency room and under anesthesia. They'll leave their bodies and go up in a corner and look back at themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the part mm -hmm. of you that observes all things in, in the area of reaction to this statement that's been made. I'm not worthy. I'm not this. And, 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 and the more you go into this, you're going to uh, find out that... Uh, the interest, that part of you that has the interest in this voice or this low self-esteem is, is it itself. Yes, yes. It is not the real you that's saying, 
I am defeated, I am unworthy. unworthy. That's the voice of itself. You ever notice that people would quote the scripture to you to say, uh, be you transformed by the renewing of the word? But if you are renewing the word, the mind. I, mean, I mean, I'm sorry, renewing of the mind, I'm, 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 my mind, anyway, uh, that is, is quoted. Be you transformed by the renewal of the mind. Do you know that the mind tries to renew itself? Mm -hmm. I, I, I've had people say to me, um, I'm a Christian and I'm saved because I can remember large verses of scripture and even chapters. And I thought when I started out, I was going to study the Bible and all the books. And when somebody brought something up, I was going to quote the whole thing to them. Mm -hmm. Thinking that I was in touch with God because of my much knowing in quotation. That's yeah. crazy. That's ridiculous. It okay. Mm -hmm. You got it? Oh, I thought you'd be patting me on the leg. You want to say something? But anyway, are uh, you saying something anyway? You pat me on the leg, girl. Don't be doing that around me. I'm, I'm, I'm still 16 years old. Sometimes I pat him on the leg because I want to get a word in. But well, going in, I want to get a word in, but I didn't have a word in just then. Go ahead. Well, I was for, listening for about seven or some years. He's been patting me on the leg and say I ain't learned how to distinguish them signals yet. When she pat me on the leg, I think she want to go somewhere. Well, uh, I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Come on back. Okay. <laughs> the ego has no interest in you attaining your full spiritual potential. Let's I mean, let's, 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 let's talk about this attaining. When you find, oh, let me back up, say it like this. Look up the definition of the word. Look, go, go to Vine's Word Dictionary. For, for the mind's sake, you're going to have to bring it to peace. Mm -hmm. Study the definition of the ego, not from is God out definition. Right. That's, not, that's, not using the acronym. Yeah. That's ego in, its, ego in itself. Find out from an Eastern scent, what does ego really mean? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. I've studied it. I got literature here all around the house on that subject. And uh, we used to teach about it a lot, but then I found out that you can teach on ego so much the way it be the ego teaching about itself. Mm -hmm. Because, and the reason we, we're saying that to discover the ego, because if once the ego is diminished and dismantled, you automatically see that that you are, or you automatically are what you are, and it won't it won't be covered up by all of that conditioning and and beliefs and preferences and fears and regrets and dreads and all of that resentment, and it's covered up by all of that stuff. I like what Miss Philly said. Miss Staples said, uncovered. Depths within, Depths within me. me. Mm -hmm. She's repeating what I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, a you in 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 inside of a, of a spaceship or satellite. In my research in, in machines, there's a gyro system that in the nose of the satellite that guides it and directs it. They can control it mm -hmm. down into the center of your solar plex area. Where the scripture said, He that believeth in me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall, shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it in my in my past messages about when I was in the room 225 in the Best Western Motel in Fort Payne, Alabama. I started praying in tongues a lot. I prayed and groaning in the spirit of Romans 8 26 in that area. And I, uh, uh, I was stopped and notion from inside uh, that he wanted me to listen. And since the groanings and the, uh, the sound from inside, and when I did, I started having visions of what it was like to operate from the belly, out of the belly. So there was an unction or in my from belly. from your central core. My central core. Now, listen, sweetheart, my head in the left brain <laughs> may not be able to pull up memories of scriptures like some of you guys out there, but because you pull it up, and use it as reference more than I do. In the eyes of God, what is He does not see you to be further ahead of me or me less than you. And some of you are left brained people out there that need to know how to apply the right brain, and right brain need to know how to apply the left brain. There's a balance between the hemispheres. But as I studied this, I found out why so many, so why we have people in school and colleges that are. What do you call it, A or whatever you call it? Uh, they, they well, excel. Excel. Mm -hmm. Well, is because it's called recall. Yeah. They have no blocks they between no their blocks. hemispheres. So all we're doing really is moving blocks, aren't we? Yeah, that's all it we're is. All that. If you could go to your right brain and fully awareness of your right side at the right hand of God, you would be completely 
completely aware of the connection mm -hmm. with everything in the universe mm -hmm. without even knowing anywhere close to the information that you've studied in books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All I'm interested in is hearing a recourse from you guys that say, uh, man, I tried this and it worked. I'm not talking about believing something you can't see and then you see it. I'm talking about what is already evident mm -hmm. and obvious mm -hmm. as a fact in front of your face. One of the things that is a fact, you know where God is. You got his address. Yeah. You got the street he live on. Okay. You got the size of clothes he wears. You know what kind of car he drives. You even know what kind of work he does. You even know what time he get up. You know what time he go to bed. You know the people that he meet. He's doing it right there in you. Mm -hmm. The yeah. in you, I am yeah. you identity, union, oneness. Absolutely, absolutely, totally. See, when we say uh, separate, separate, separatist mind or separatist mind or uh, separation from God, the mindset of separation from God, what we're saying is there is a belief mm -hmm. that we've held that God is absent. Mm -hmm. God has never been absent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the belief that God is absent causes you to act out a certain way. Uh, when when you don't believe, when you believe that God is not present, and what and your feelings are telling you that you uh, you need this and you need that, and it's not so much that you do, it's that your feelings are telling you, your mind is telling you that you need, you need, you need. If at this very present moment, there is nothing happening. There is nothing needed. That's right. Somebody asked a person here in, in my ranch, is mysticism a religion? Um, and the answer was, as a direct mysticism is a, is a spiritual discipline aiming at direct communion with God or the ultimate truth. Yeah. Now, direct communion. You have always been in direct communion with God. But we've had some concept of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. You have never been outside of communion with God. You know, you ought to hear people, God, hear not the words of a sinner. I don't see why not. That's the only way he can hear. <laughs> what else can he hear if that's what you believe? <laughs> uh, if you believe um, you're a sinner, he's heard you. <laughs> your beliefs cannot stop. That's right. Michelle says, does meditation and prayer connect the right and left brain? All right, now. Now, let's just say you're a baby. You just come into this world. you just as much saved then as somebody been in the world for 100 years. Mm -hmm. That may be a difference in agreement on that. But I've been over on the other side and seen a bunch of babies over there who didn't even know anything about receiving the Holy Ghost over here. Yeah, yeah. So now we, we, we are beginning to get into a place where we are dropping the ego. God has never been absent. Never been absent. He's in the right and left brain. We are all inside of him. And when this thing is over, we're going to understand oh. why our government is going the way it's going. And why our president is doing what and he's why doing. Your life is going to and why your life yeah. is going the but way it, it is. But there is a place where you can come to where you're not even asking why anymore. Mm -hmm. The why doesn't matter anymore. You just learn to navigate it using your own navigation system, your own in inbuilt, inbred navigation system that is spirit that moves and lives and and uh uh, motivates you and animates you. you when I say you I mean the body mind but you are not the body mind so I want to answer yeah, Michelle's go ahead. Go ahead. question right quick and we, we've got our time is really gone just mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. but she says does meditation and prayer connect the right and left brain and I think in order for us to answer that question to know what the left brain the left brain from my own understanding and research is that logical side of us where we ask why or how the left the right brain on the other hand is the brain of imagery it's Pictures. where your subconscious uh motivations come from mm -hmm. it's where your 
your imagery comes from. And mm -hmm. a lot of our imagery, I have to admit, a lot of our imagery is based on the conditions we've been through. Mm -hmm. So we hold pictures in our head mm -hmm. of how things are based on that conditioning. And you hear pastor talk once in a while, he'll talk like he's still talking to a congregation of people who don't believe what he's saying because there's a picture still in the head mm -hmm. that these people are there and mm -hmm. they're not but that picture is still there mm -hmm. so bringing the connection isn't so much important as understanding how each works and so we'll talk more about that maybe later maybe later we'll talk about in, that. in in the annuals of heaven that dimension of all known seeing there are students that have actually been trained in the spirit world or the spirit unction in the hall of study and records inside of us. They've been trained as to how to look inside of people's body mm -hmm. and remove infected parts and put them back. Now, I'm introducing you to something that I've investigated in for years, and it can it can be done. Thank you so much, all of you guys out there, for coming in with us today. Yes, we appreciate you guys joining us. It seems like we we got a, a maybe a part two to this this message. I don't know because I I don't feel like we came to a, a real end with it. But I wanted to say I don't know if Jill is available today to put on here how to give. Uh, but I want you to and Laverne, if you're on there, would you write that in on the comments how to give as far as texting? I can say it, but I want her to write it for me. Uh, and it's you can give to Cornerstone simply by texting CLC Greensboro to 73256. And that will take you directly to the link to give to Cornerstone. Also, you can go to the Use App button on this page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on this page and it will take you directly to where Cornerstone's uh, account is, and you can give directly there. Also, if you would like to bless Pastor and I, we appreciate your, your support in that area personally. You can go to Cash App, and that's uh, dollar sign A Sawyer C. And um, I don't think I've got any other announcements except no that Tuesday we'll be night. back on Tuesday night. Tuesday Thank night. you, Laverne. She just put it up and there then for we us. Got some other activities. Yeah, and and so uh, Laverne has put it up there, text CLC Greensboro to 73256. And again, I want to say, because we're building our database, we're building our uh, email list and all of that, if you guys haven't sent your email in to Oliver so that when we do our Zooms and our uh, making sure that you get the news that of what we're getting ready to do, send it to his uh, email address. I'm trying to get my mind to think without rushing. It's Oliver Blue truly at live.com. So make sure you send your email to him. And if you want to be on the Zoom, make sure you let him know that you want to be on the Zoom so he can send an invite to you. Uh, we plan, we'd have to set another Zoom right away, but we will keep you uh, posted about that. We'll make an announcement. And we thank you guys so much. What, is, what honey? Michelle. And yes, I see that. So yes. Tried. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see that. Okay. I see that. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna shut up or shut off shut up and shut off right now. <laughs> uh, we'll be back Tuesday night. At, Tuesday at night seven. at seven. And then maybe we can answer some more questions that discuss about the uh, um, about the uh, what what was the question she asked about uh, praying and uh, mm -hmm. meditation? How to connect? Connect. The but left you, and the right you, brain. Here's the punchline. You've never been disconnected, but there's an illusion that gives you the idea that you have, mm -hmm. and you have to hook back up. Mm -hmm. You never. The mm -hmm. power's never been turned off. Mm -hmm. It's always on. You just have to know it. You have to find out. Okay. So, Michelle, we're going to try to connect with you personally so we can answer some of your questions and help you through these things. Uh, I do want you to know that what you're trying to do, get done by having something taught to you, that's really not necessary. What we need to do is remove all of this urge for you to 
have those things uh, done because you're okay. We just need to make sure you know you're okay. Yeah, once right. you settle in on the rest, you, you'll see the manifestation of it. Yes. Thank you again. Thank Stay you with us. We'll work with you on that, okay? Yes, and we love you guys. We'll see you Tuesday night. Okay, Tuesday bye-bye. Tuesday 7. See you later. Bye-bye. bye-bye.